Good evening, everybody. Welcome to America's Third Party. I am David Sponheim. Welcome. I f definitely believe that we are uh, dealing with some pretty weird times, I'll tell you. I was watching a, a show last night about this, this person that was referred to uh, by our mod over there. Uh, Tsunami Rose suggested I look into this. Uh, she's a religious person, and she said that this man behind me was uh, at one point in the Illuminati and came out of the Illuminati and talked about it. Yeah, his name was John Todd. And his story was so bizarre that I wanted to actually, you know, research it. And that's what we've been doing the past uh, few days is looking into the dark areas, the recesses of the Illuminati and the rabbit hole. When you go down that rabbit hole and find out who really is involved. And it turns out I've been right all along. These people aren't even Jewish. They're Ashkenazis, like the Rothschilds. So if you've been thinking that Zionism is all about Jewry, and it's not, it never has been, it never was. It has nothing to do with Jewish people. The Illuminati is run by Zionists who are not Jewish, okay? I think everyone has to understand that. And people like this man who they, they say died, but we don't really know if he died or not. There's some talk about him actually being imprisoned, but they took him out of commission when he exposed what he was. He exposed the fact that he had been born into this secret group of the 13 families of Rothschilds and others. And Rothschilds control this group of Satanists who run the world. And I, I didn't even want to go down this, this mystery tour. Uh, but over the years, since I started this broadcast, I've been getting all kinds of new information, and I don't think anyone could possibly uh, share uh, more information than we do on a nightly basis. And I know that's one of the reasons why a lot of you come in here, because you really want to you know, know more about uh, things that you don't understand. I didn't know anything about the New World Order when I first started the, the race in 2008. I, I was completely taken dumbfounded when somebody said do you know about the new world order and i hadn't read bill cooper's book william cooper the uh, renowned legendary conspiracy theorist and i learned you know after reading his book and other books and other sites and listening to many other people that there was definitely something up about the world leaders and the, finding out how how dark this rabbit hole is was really a kind of an eye-opener so I want you to know that I wouldn't even do this. I wouldn't even be building a third party or running for a third party if I didn't really believe that this is something we have to actually deal with. If I went into this blindly, I would be foolish and I would be doing a disservice to all of you by saying, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a third party, but uh, we're still gonna deal with the powers that be. We're gonna deal with the powers that be, but with, with foreknowledge of what they're all about. Let me go ahead and get into uh, another chat room. Okay, I'm back. But anyway, this link right here is the definitive source of all this information that I was just looking at. I believe they've been camping out in our room for a long time, these people. They're watching what we're doing. They don't believe that with all the abilities that, that we have as people, they don't believe that we're going to be able to spread the word fast enough to stop them. They know that the message of what they're doing is out, but they don't think it's going to be anything to worry about because they've got all the methods of controlling our political system and trolling us. They got that down. They know how to do it. They know how to stop us. They know what they're doing. They know exactly how to stop us in the show. They've corralled us into a network called Vaughn and we keep trying to break out into other networks and we face nothing but problems, but we're growing. Ivlog has more people, but we're, we're trying to 
to deal with their attacks because we've been attacked numerous times we used to do blog tv and then blog tv got bought out from under us by some federal informant of some sort and <laughs> it was kind of ironic that that even happened battle cam got shut down i don't know if battle cam's coming back up or not but uh alki david pretty much pulled the the plug on battle cam and i understand tiny url or no somebody else uh, is, is buying them tiny chat anyway Whew. hello and we also have ustream so ustream is our flagship uh, site that we're trying to develop which is an ibm based system with decent chatting abilities but i think you only get a 30-day trial yeah well the carlisle group is the rothschild family and you're wondering what they're doing they are indeed the the people that are making the moves the big moves in the financial sector and have for years we were actually uh threatened by an attorney for the carlisle group yeah glad you looked it up so if you want to check out this site and research the dark the darkest recesses of the illuminati this is the way to go today is technology thursday so I really don't want to focus on the Illuminati today. It just happened to be something I was looking at earlier. We, we can talk about new technologies and the threat of cybernetics, but it does kind of you know focus back on the Illuminati because they have the ability to create slaughter bots and drones that are weaponized. And that could all put us all in a very d vulnerable position someday. And we really have to start thinking about that. So in a way, those conversations with technology are now merging. So no longer we do we just think that the Illuminati is some group of old men sitting around making decisions about the world. They're making some major decisions about life and death on this planet. And we're not involved. We're going to be the ones dead. That means that we're not going to involve in the discussion. We're not even involved in finding out what they're doing. They don't want our input. This car is powered by salt water. It gets a top speed of 217 miles per hour. No kidding. I, I knew that they're working on fuel cell technology and salt water is uh, really interesting. I've been experimenting with it myself, just building salt water batteries. Uh, we're going to try to show you a video tonight about uh, how, to, how to make a, an amazing new form of uh, energy out of water. And that's exactly what this does. That is a cool looking car. The recent announcement at that the Quant E Sport Limousine, which is a saltwater powered car, has been certified for use on European roads is a big sign that the oil cartels are losing the energy war. I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm listening to you. I'll be glad to show you the blimp plane technology in a bit, okay? And Guest 235 says that the second to last episode of X-Files was all about AI. I believe it. They're foreshadowing what's going on with this, uh, this technology. Well, look at this. It's amazing. It's one of the greatest energy inventors, uh, greatest alternative energy inventors that they silenced was Nikola Tesla. All right. Unlike traditional cars that run on gasoline, this sport limousine, Quant E, sport limousine runs on an electrolyte flow cell battery system made by Nano Flow Cell that has the ability to generate an astonishing 920 horsepower. Wow. That's huge. This saltwater powered car can go from 0 to 62 in 2.8 seconds and has a top speed of 217 miles per hour. It's built by a Germany company called Quant. Now today we uh, mark a, a, a kind of a, land, a landmark day in, in some ways because Kim Jong-un has offered to meet with Donald Trump and they're setting up an actual meeting. I'll play this video in just a bit. I really believe that it's a mistake to meet him in person, but I said that about about Moon Jae-in. I mean, he went over to Pyongyang and met Kim Jong-un, and he was okay. So I'm going to have to say, Donald, uh, you're you're amazing. You want to go meet this man who you you've been threatening all these years, or at least for a year? I don't know. It just seems like a little bit too good to be true, you know. I'm a little worried. I, I don't trust anything that goes on in Pyongyang. Now, if Donald were to go to Pyongyang to meet him, I would be I would be very concerned about it. I really would. Because in a way, Kim Jong-un 
does not have anything to lose by making a radical move and, and attacking Donald and taking the nuclear football. So I'm a little, I'm concerned that we would even agree to such a deal when we don't even have the, the nuts and bolts ironed out about the meeting, what they're trying to accomplish. So I'm a little bit taken aback by the fact that he took a knee jerk yes to the whole thing, but in a way I'm happy because he's been talking uh, about North Korea for a long time and he created such a media storm about it and threats as well that he has to answer to those threats. I would never have threatened Kim Jong-un the way he has. And that's really on him. So if he's going to do it, go for it. But I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't meet him. I would, I would recommend that he not meet him, but rather meet him in digital land. Telepresence brings the cameras to you, and we could easily help set up a telepresence system for Kim Jong-un in Pyongyang. Our men could go over there. But you see, when, whenever we go in there, and we have an attache that follows the president, they're going to be fully armed. So I really don't understand why Donald would agree to doing this, other than maybe he's in a tough, tough place and he has to do something. I don't know, because he put himself in this position. It's kind of unfortunate. But here we are, and I, I hope it works out for him. There's only so much uh, I, can, I can see them accomplishing, though, because Kim Jong-un definitely said he's not going to get rid of any nuclear weapons. And he does want us to stop the war games with, with South Korea. So that would be the wiggle room we would do. We would, we, I said that this should have been done five years ago, that we should stop the war games with South Korea, but maintain our presence in South Korea. But this is the big news for today. And that is Trump has accepted the offer to meet North, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, which is a landmark moment. And I just don't know if it's the right decision. I hope it is for him, his sake and for our sake, but. I don't know, this is a guy who uh, who killed his uncle in the most brutal way and uh, has systematically poisoned using VX gas his brother, his half-brother, killed his old girlfriend and 16 others who had just done a little bit of uh, erotic photography, slightly not even by American standards porn. But it really it does not bode well with the track record we've seen of Kim Jong-un for us to actually meet him. So I'm a little bit weirded out by the whole idea of Donald Trump actually going over there and doing this. I don't know. A light, yeah, light erotica or something. His, his, Kim Jong-un's girlfriend was, was killed along with 16 other people. I mean, Kim Jong-un kills people. Every day, people die in the Camp 22 system that he has. He not only takes, if somebody says something against his regime, he not only takes them and arrests them, but he arrests their whole family. And everybody's hauled in to these detention centers called Camp 22. So Donald, I don't know if you're, if you go meet him, you may be uh, ending up in a Camp 22 detention center. Anyway, pay attention folks. Have you heard anything similar at, at happen at your home? Let's take a look. How a smart meter can affect your tree. This tree to be quite interesting because as you can see on the left side of the tree, there's lots of fruit. But as we move over to the right side, uh, there's hardly any, except for maybe a few sickly oranges over on this side. Wow. So I was wondering why this would be and one possible reason is that right next to this side of the tree is a smart meter. Wow. So all day, every day, the smart meter is sending out pulses of microwave radiation just a couple feet from this side of the tree. So it's a pulse like that. And those. Wow, okay. So if the tree knows not to grow near the smart meter, we should not be putting people near the smart meters. Yeah, it affects surrounding plants and it's probably very true. Yeah. I I put an, a Faraday cage over my smart meter. And it's not a, like a big deal. It's so simple. Here is a, a sample of what I did. You know how the meters have the uh, the glass the glass around it the smart meters 
actually I have a copy of the smart meter right here let's call it for convenience sake we'll call them uh, death meters hang on that wrong picture yeah here it is a death meter all right so I'm just calling it for convenience sake a death meter so it's actually a scissor fight called it that it's meter it's it's checking the amount of energy usage your electric is using and it's sending a signal out constantly so by putting this over it it actually fits right over the the top of it by putting this over it you're taking all of the uh, field energy and it's shrinking and it's, it's limited to just this uh, metal cage that I've constructed. Now this is aluminum wiring, which does conduct electricity ever so slightly, but it will hold the energy field energy in and it'll bounce right back on the, and the signal it's emitting is a, uh, is just a, like a spurt of information and it still gets out because there's holes in this. The signal gets out, but there's so much field energy that it's unsafe to be around these things. Now what scissor fight recommended is we take, take a piece of a copper wire, just the standard wire and run it down to the ground and ground it with a grounding unit. Now I did that. So I grounded mine, but this absorbs all the field energy and anyone around it is not likely to be affected. Whereas if you're in an apartment building and you're looking for, uh, for safety, don't get an apartment near a smart meter grid in, in your apartment. If you're near the grid, uh, you could be very likely endangering yourself to a potential amount of energy. Uh, the grid can look like uh, the thing on the wall in the back of this picture. That puts out a tremendous amount of field energy. Not something you should mess around with. Anyway, Good to know. And if you have an apartment near there, you may want to have a, a, another one asked to have it transferred, claiming you want more light or something, you know, a sunny, a sunny window or something. Just come up with an excuse. But smart meters violate FCC radiation exposure limits, says a new study. Now, this shocks me a lot. A lot of people are shocked because not a lot of studies have been done on any of the technology that we have. Our microwaves have not been thoroughly studied for their effect on, on everything in our bodies. We do know that microwave ovens can affect the way our heart works. There have been studies on arrhythmia and how you get changes in body rhythms when you get near your microwave. They're very dangerous, yeah. And they put every smart, every house in America has a smart meter in it with the exception of just a handful. I've got a smart meter and we weren't even given the choice of whether we could have it put in. Now they're actually offering people some choices, but only because people have been bold enough to, to sue the, the power companies. But believe it or not, they haven't tested any of this equipment. Yeah. Same with cell phones. Don't hold a cell phone next to your head when you're using it. Use the speaker phone. David Dennison is having an affair with your, your lovely wife, Ben. Really? Is David Dennison Donald Trump or, or what? Is Jennifer Garner seeing Donald Trump? Is that what's happening? Hi, Ben. Do they come up and look at your smart meter every month, the mob? Yeah, if they come to your door and check, then they, you probably don't have a smart meter. If they check your meter, you're probably still without a smart meter. You're lucky. I'm not David Dennison, though. No. That would be Donald Trump. That's his uh, alternative name that he came up with. Well, let's be clear. Yeah, David Dennison is his, uh, his alternate idea of who he is. The David Dennison memes ensued after Trump's alias is revealed. So, yeah, he's still t tweeting under his alias, David Dennison. He has been named in a lawsuit filed in L.A. court by Stormy Daniels. So, in it, there's reference to this David Dennison. So we now know that Trump is alternative. 
Twitter account was uh, David Dennison. If you want to read the whole story, here it is at heavy.com. He it heavy. It's heavy.com. Interior spending 139000 to fix doors in the Secretary Zinke's office. Okay, this guy never really, uh, Secretary of the Interior never really did anything in his life, apparently. Uh, so he's paying hundreds of thousands or over 100,000 to fix some doors. 139,000 to fix doors in his office. I don't believe this. Seriously? What an unbelievable waste of money. The Secretary was not aware of this contract, but agrees that this is a lot of money for demo, install, materials, and labor. Uh, you think? Well, yeah, I think you really don't deserve your job if you can't manage the government's purse strings. So you may want to just resign on this note. Others have resigned for far less than 135000 The flaky administration of Donald Trump. Well, the plans for the presidency include having good hair every day. So as you can see, that's the most important part of the show right now is my hair. Slavia, yeah. I wouldn't. I would. I don't recommend Trump meeting. I don't think he should in any way meet with Kim Jong Un. That's foolish. What's wrong with Trump's judgment that he would agree to meet with him? I would have said I'll meet with you in telepresence land, um, digitally, but I'm not going to meet with you in person. I was really shocked that Moon Jae In met with him. I thought that was kind of risky, but Kim Jong-un wants to engender trust in people, but how can you really trust somebody that's launching attacks over the bow of Japan? I mean, open a discussion. You know, the idea is open a discussion, but let's not make it personal. I mean, let me ask Kim Jong-un, would you travel outside of Pyongyang to visit Donald Trump? <laughs> I guarantee you he wouldn't go anywhere. In fact, I, I can assure you that Kim Jong-un won't be traveling to Washington, D.C. to meet Trump. He wants Trump to go to Pyongyang to meet him, which is ridiculous. We already nearly lost a nuclear football in China. How, how do you think it's going to go down in, in Pyongyang when the, the entire military swoops down on the nuclear football and, and takes Donald off to Camp 22? I mean, seriously, what are we going to do? The same threat we've had all along to, to launch nuclear war against him. We don't have any other threats. So seriously, what would happen if, God forbid, Kim Jong-un hauls Donald Trump out of there and puts him in Camp 22 or worse? He's not above doing this. And he's not below it either. He could do this. It's all propaganda. I agree with your grandpa. I don't think Trump is going to meet him. He'd be foolish to meet him. They'd kidnap him, yeah. I mean, hello. I just don't believe that Trump would make such a foolish decision as to agree to meet him. I mean, it's like everywhere you turn, Trump makes the wrong decision. Now he is softening. He's softening on the uh, on the approach toward the, t the ridiculous tariff on steel. Elon Musk is saying that his cars... Uh, that he makes in China and Elon Musk has doubled his output in China and his, his income from China went from one billion to two billion dollars so Elon Musk is making good money on the deal with China we have it's all gonna change and even he tweeted Trump and asked him are you gonna accept the same terms that they have are they gonna what if they give a 25 percent tariff on their end so it's gonna affect his sales and he said it's a what Trump is doing with this tariff is synonymous to, to putting lead shoes on. You know, it's going to slow down the growth of his car industry. Well, North Korea has been broke a long time, but they could easily print up enough, uh, make up enough meth in a bathtub to keep their economy going. Yeah, they produce meth. How do you think it gets out? You know, the world is filled with methamphetamines because of North Korea. That's how they make money. Well, a tariff on steel is going to slow down industry. Everybody knows that tariffs hurt industry, period. And now Trump has relaxed the tariffs on Canada and Mexico, which shows what, what an idiotic idea it is. But I really believe the SEC needs to investigate a Carl Icahn 
and his link to the tariffs because Carl Icahn was dumping lots of stock in, in the big machinery sector right before Trump announced that he was going to impose a tariff on, uh, on steel and aluminum. So Carl Icahn is a very powerful man, very rich, but he doesn't do things without foreknowledge. And he might have had foreknowledge about what Trump was going to do because he dumped 32 million in stock five days before Trump announced the tariff. The Steelworkers Union can be happy, and I, I do believe we needed to make some moves on steel, but 25% is extreme. 15% would have been more than enough to not destabilize the industry itself and the all the other industries, the durable goods industries, the cars, everything. It's all going to be affected. It's Bishop Wu-Tang. And you've got a $14,000 recycled electric car with better range than a Tesla? Really? Well, that's kind of cool. Nice. Range anxiety is by far the biggest concern that many people have about electric cars. Tesla said the Model S100D can travel more than 300 miles on a single charge, but one Italian enthusiast stretched the range to 670 miles. So he doubled what Tesla says he can do on his own car. Entrepreneur Eric Lundgren intends not only to ma smash the Tesla record by going more than 1,000 miles on a single charge, but to do so in a car that costs less than 14000 to build and uses 90% recycled parts. This guy's great. Yeah, let's watch the video. When will we break the 1,000 kilometer range mark for an electric car? As it is, the record right now for a Model S is 800 kilometers. That's the furthest that anyone has driven a Model S. Um, so we could be close? Yeah, we're pretty close. Uh, now, in order to do that, they did drive at a relatively slow speed. So, you know, we're talking, I think they drove maybe at 40 or 50 kilometers an hour or something like that. Um, but um, I, I think my guess is probably we could break a thousand kilometers within a year or two. Okay. I'd say 2017 for sure. It is now mid-2017, and as far as we know, the Tesla has yet to do a thousand kilometers. Last month, Elon tweeted, over 1,000 kilometers should be possible in a 100D with the right tires. So they're getting close. To show me what you want to change on the car. Eric Lundgren, the guy who built the Phoenix, a car designed to do 400 miles on a single charge, has recruited me to see if we can hit the 1,000 kilometer mark. This is the first look that anybody gets of the actual car. Nobody's seen this yet. You want to explain it? So this is the controller, and this is made to run at a 130 volts max, except this battery is 134 fully charged. So we just change that to one that can handle more voltage, and then we can charge the battery all the way up. Just an extra eight volts into the battery, it's like another 40 kilowatt hours worth of energy. And to put it into perspective, so, you know, the BMW i3 yeah. car, we figured out how to calibrate this to get an extra, Two basically of one and a half of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whole car. So we can't wait to run this. We're going to run it again in, uh, I don't know, like we're going to run this thing probably in a week. Of course, that was easier said than done because for the next week, we worked on the car around the clock, including an international holiday like 4th of July. Cool. Well, we'll be bringing you this later tonight. This is going to be in our YouTube lineup. <clears throat> yeah. Excellent. Right on. It was already in my cool text section and my 182. So that's good. We'll add it to the 183. Right on, man. Yeah. So you know this guy. He has a YouTube channel. Good. Another story from Scissor Fight, he says, Alexa has been freaking out Amazon Echo users by randomly laughing at them. Imagine walking around your house and having Alexa laugh at you and wonder why you even purchased it. <laughs> That's crazy. Randomly laughing at people. There it is. It watches you. It has, what, nine nine microphones or something? It listens to you. 
I want to hear it laughing at me though, and I don't hear it. So, oh well. So much for laughing at people. Yeah, there was a person that spoke out, having an argument with their wife, and they mentioned uh, they mentioned nine one one. And I, I don't know, maybe maybe he was threatening her or she was threatening him. And they said, I'm going to call that. And then Alexa called it for them. A few minutes later, uh, the police arrived at their door and they said, there, there's there been a call to 911 here. We didn't make the call. Oh, Alexa heard you say that. So they came to your door. Sir, you're going to have to get, get we're going to cuff you, sir, and take you away. Because in California, they're required to take the husband away if there's a 911 call. Yeah, it's a rule. Women don't have the right to say, no, he didn't hurt me. Because they automatically assume that they did. They're, the husband's threatening you, so you can't possibly be credible. Okay, here's the audio of Alexa laughing. It is. It's Hillary's <laughs> laugh. Yeah, it sounds just like lying in bed about to fall asleep when Alexa starts laughing. Like it's making fun of your penis size or something. <laughs> we're aware of this and we're working to fix it. That's nice. A little late for that. <laughs> Uh, 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 ooh, he, he, uh. Yeah, I just can't imagine anybody really wanting Alexa in their home, but I guess it's fun to like say, Alexa, play pink. I want to hear her entire collection. Yes, David, of course. You know, or something like that. But it is kind of weird to hear somebody laughing, you know. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> what? All right, that was fun. He came, he left, and he, yeah. So, yeah, I heard Jimmy Kimmel is now a social justice warrior. Ever since he realized he, he has a voice. I know. He was given a voice by the Illuminati. As long as he says what they tell him to say, he's okay. We didn't want Hillary. We didn't want Bill as the first man. It, we just got through having eight years of, of a transgender pretending to be a female. The last thing we needed was a, a, an old guy pretending to be hot for the ladies. I mean, come on. I'm a live beamer. He, Jimmy Kimmel was fine with the all of the uh, the man show. Now he's a pussy, according to Badger Waxer. Michelle is a dude, man. Michelle has a penis. Yes. Yeah, so, so don't please don't in any way attack Jewish people if you're an anti-Zionist, okay? Because Jewish people are not even Zionists. By and large, the whole idea of creating the uh, the state of Israel was the Zionist dream. But then the Zionist dream became world domination. I have no problem with the state of Israel. World domination, on the other hand, I have a problem with. So that's the big, big discerning factor that the people that are running this world domination thing are not even Jewish, like the Rothschilds. Did I ever think I'd have Trump's hairdo? I don't have Trump's hairdo. This is my hairdo. But my curl is uh, is a little bit sweeping. It's sweeping a little too far over. Yeah. So anyway, here we are with Pence to look forward to. And he says that it, in our time, he will eliminate abortions. 
And no one ever explained to him that Roe v. Wade is not his decision to make. He didn't, he didn't understand that. Uh, the fact is, Trump has to fire Pence, and he can simply use the, the email issue as his reason. All he has to do is fire Pence, and then I will be glad to accept the role of vice president, and we can work together in any matter possible. I will let bygones be bygones, and we can step forward into the future. When Trump is finally indicted for colluding with Russians, I'll help through that process. I might even pardon Trump. Yeah. I might even consider pardoning him, like Gerald Ford did with Richard Nixon. Yes. Yes, the, the, right. The, the, the Rothschilds are not Jewish. We know that. Thank you. No, I would never stage a coup d'etat, no. That, it would. I'm against anybody who's a secessionist. I'm against anybody who would do a coup against our gut, our country. I believe in the structure of our nation. I believe in our constitution, but I don't believe that any of us even understand it. Most of us don't even get it. Well, it's okay. You guys can dislike Jewish people, but there's nothing really to dislike. They're not greedy people. You've been looking at Ashkenazis all these years saying that they were Jewish, and they're not. So you can blame the Nazis. Don't blame Jewish people. Dropping a piece of ice down a 90-meter borehole creates a, a very interesting sound. I hope this doesn't bore you. <laughs> the borehole sound. Boing. There are places you could drop things in holes that you can't even hear them drop. Mel's Hole out in Spokane, Washington was one of those places. They could drop refrigerators in this hole and no one would ever hear it land. How weird is that? You know, Mel's Hole, Spokane, Washington, yeah. So that's very interesting to note that uh, smart meters are violating exposure laws set by the FCC on radiation. Yeah, I, stopsmartmeters.org has this website. If you want to check it out and get more information, here it is. Mel has got a deep hole, yes. Yeah, I, there. well, you can't even get near Mel's hole anymore. He, he It's been completely owned by the government. A further study found that excessively elevated radio frequency radiation levels can be expected throughout homes and businesses where smart meters have been installed compared to living within two or three, 600 feet of a major cell phone tower. So your smart meter puts you the equivalent of two or 600 feet away from a cell phone tower. So that's why I'm urging people to build these, these amazing Faraday cages. And this is just aluminum uh, screening material. You can get it at Ace Hardware. I wrapped it in a circle and I took a stapler. I stapled the seam here. I cut a little circle out of this and I stapled this in here. It's stapled together. It's real simple. And it'll work. It'll help your family. And it, it won't violate any laws because they can still get their meter read. There's a security threat at Playa del Carmen. So if you're planning on a trip there, you may not want to get out of, off the boat. It's a popular resort city in Mexico that our government is saying there's some credible threats. So that's something to think about if you're uh, you know, happening to go to Playa del Carmen. I don't know if it's a, you know, exactly what the threat is, but who cares? 
Faraday cage. The concept is to disperse the field energy. Across from Cozumel, yes. You've been there, I see. Wow, I've never been on a cruise. Ask a Nazi. I'm not thanking Nazis for anything. Ask a Nazi. Does it work? I don't know if it works. I have never had a brain cancer, so I guess it does. The whole steel issue, uh, I would have put together a 15% ecological tariff to help clean the air and create clean coal and build national composting plans. 15% ecological tariff was my idea I put on the table back in 2008. And it would be imposed on any country that doesn't meet or comply with our human rights and uh, other environmental concerns. Like, where does the product go? Cradle to grave tracking. And it would have not destabilized any markets because 15%, I would have even been willing to go 10% just to minimize the effect of tariffs because tariffs are economic killers. And we've seen this historically. I know you were at the Woodby Island Electronics School in Navy. They've got a very good one. I bet you learned a lot. Yeah, aluminum netting, uh, aluminum screening blocks the RF frequencies, radio frequencies. Well, Trump is going to bring back, bring back coal. He's already selling West Virginia off to the Chinese. I mean, he's already bent over and given China West Virginia. I, I'm quite shocked, actually. For a man who said he was going to be tough on China, he certainly wasn't. We talked about that last night. We need to make clean coal. We need to make clean coal, and we can loop the carbon. It's possible. Uh, I don't need an illegal back door to Moscow. I won't be communicating with him. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not like Trump. I am not in any way uh, minimized uh, my number of solutions. When you say more solutions should be in our campaign, check out our old site. It's full of solutions. Check out our platform. It's full of solutions. We really do have everything in place to fix the country. We really do. I wouldn't even be doing this show if I didn't believe that all these great ideas that I've had that Trump tried to copy and didn't even implement weren't great ideas. They are. They are, they are designed to help the economy and help trigger growth in our tech sector. Uh, but we're seeing companies like right now uh, move outside of Silicon Valley. Many companies, uh, including the car companies like Tesla, are moving to China for their production. So if Tesla is going to cancel a production plant in China because of this new steel embargo or steel tariff, then it's going to be a, a critical for him to actually make enough money on his product in order to stay in business. Remember, Tesla doubled his money last year. Elon Musk doubled his money last year on the sale of Chinese Teslas. Isn't that amazing? So he's already made some major strides. It, it feels to him like this is a mistake, and I don't blame him for feeling that way. Trump is saying he wants to eliminate much of the uh, debt we have, the trade deficit. He wants to reduce the trade deficit by $100 billion a year. Well, Elon Musk just reduced it by $1 billion. But why don't you listen to Elon Musk and, and let him dictate where steel should go, Donald? I mean, let's face it, this guy's in the trenches trying to make money. You're trying to disrupt an incredibly volatile market. And ironically, if you want to get it down to $100 hundred billion dollar less of a trade deficit we're going to have to start asking china to allow us to build in china they're not allowing anybody to move in there they have to share partnership up with chinese companies in order to move in there tesla is thinking of a plan that will just take over an industry uh, that's already there and and build it up but he doesn't want to share his ideas or technologies with the chinese so he wants some bargaining power there so he doesn't have to get screwed when the Chinese try to insist that he share his technology and his profit, which is exactly what they are doing. So China is not having an open door to the growth of new technologies in their country that's owned by America. 
But when we want to do some shale oil mining, they want to come in and take over West Virginia's shale oil operation, and Trump says that's okay. So I want to know from Trump what we got in return by allowing them to come in and do uh, shale mining in uh, West Virginia. What did we get in return? I don't know. Trump got 38 trademarks cleared, one of which is Trump Escort Service, which is really weird. But what did we get? Because if Trump traded the 38 trademarks for West Virginia shale oil or shale coal operation, then we basically got screwed by a guy who's conflicting his personal interest with our, our national interests, Trump. Yeah, well, Elon Musk is, he's burning on all fours. I mean, he even admitted that he stays awake using crack cocaine. People couldn't understand how he gets three hours of sleep and he still is out there doing this every day. Well, he said he uses a lot of crack, so. This tie, you like the tie, really? It, it's, it was from, a, it's a Nordstrom's. It's a Robert Talbot. Looks like steel, doesn't it? Lego reports first sales fall in 13 years, saying there's no quick fix. And here we heard from Lego, they said that they were going to create a, a green alternative Lego product that's made out of extruded uh, lignin and natural products. So they're opening up a green line of Legos, but they're announcing that their sales are falling. Now, Legos have been enormously popular among young kids, and they're really using them to create robots and all kinds of fun stuff. But even a good thing starts to go bad after a while. First drop in sales and profits in more than a decade as children ditch its plastic bricks for more modern toys. Wow. Profits drop by 17%. Now they're opening up these first sustainable Lego pieces to go on sale. They're entirely made from plastic based sourced from sugar cane and will be available late this year. Legos are uh, dropped in sales 17%, but they are opening up this green line of Legos. That's cool. Made it a hundred percent from source sugar cane material. Yeah. Nice. That's a nice outfit. All right. Yeah. Hemp plastic, right. Scrizzle says they should be making Legos out of hemp plastic. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is having a kind of a brain freeze. We don't know what's going on, but she had uh, 16 brain freezes in a 15 minute presser. Uh, when she talked to the press, she's starting to lose it. Some people think that she's the one on the Alzheimer's drugs that they're, they say people are asking for in Congress. March 5th, March the, sixth, the end of the, uh, the time for an state. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, I'm very proud of the work of Benny Thompson and uh, ranking member Thompson. Most uh, ex exhilarating uh, thrill for people, it's not permanent. And again, as you know, um, yesterday, 14 months later, House and Senate is happening this week. This week we had the sixth being the 14 month uh, in September of 2008. So why are we going home at 11 o'clock that the Russians uh, did um, disrupt our, attempt to disrupt our elections? You know, there's a, uh, maybe we'll meet next, for example, his budget, uh, uh, cutting Medicare, but it shouldn't take that long. What the Republicans are doing that want to be exploded by the big banks is so wrong. You, you have to give credit for being brazen. And uh, we'll just see how it goes. But you might say, how do we help community, uh, community banks? How do we help? Um, S, um, um, help somebody, I don't know. Um, Nancy, do you remember when we were at the Alzheimer's clinic together? 
Uh, um, no, you don't? Okay, well, that's a good sign because we never went to the Alzheimer's clinic together. <laughs> good. Poor Nancy. She just doesn't remember stuff. I think she's doing pretty well. Yeah, never mind. I don't like Nancy. Well, she's doing okay considering she's bumbling her way through the scripting that she's reading. But you know something? She needs one of those earbuds that Donald uses. You know, where they tell him what to say five words at a time. Those are really good. They work great with Donald because he can't read very well. I know. All right, I'm going to let Sarah take over the show. I'm going to go work on some more waffles. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy. Yeah. Thanks for doing that. You bet. We appreciate your efforts you. cooking. Yes, I did try it. Well, I guess she wants her teeth to be shiny. I don't know. You're going to win my trivia? Let's see. I've got to do... I've got to pull one other website up. Maybe two websites. And then we will start trivia. Maybe Nancy Pelosi needs to start taking um, olive leaf extract. I think I was saying um because she handled, said um so much. Thank you, really, Rose? Question mark. Hello, Tsunami Rose. It is going well. Thank you so much for asking. I love my life. Wow, a loyal dog refuses to leave the hospital where his owner died four months ago. Dogs are really amazing that way. I need to play a slot machine maybe in the background while I talk. Those people on YouTube are cool to watch. Do they just get mesmerized in the game? Sarah, math question. 27 grams is... Point nine five two three nine. Is that t close to 12 ounces? Well, 0 0.9 is 9 tenths of an ounce. It takes 9... So the first number after the decimal is taking away it's breaking one thing and anyway it's a almost one ounce so it's definitely not close to 12 ounces nowhere close to 12 ounces you have a link for me yeah because 0 0.9 is nine tenths which is taking one whole thing and cutting it into 10 pieces and then you get nine out of those 10 pieces. Oh, nice. Offspring.lifehacker.com girls can take free coding workshops at Microsoft stores this month. That is very cool. I love it. Microsoft stores across the country. I didn't even know there were Microsoft stores across the country. I agree. I agree with you, Skrizzle. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And no, I don't think... Uh, but I agree with the first part of your statement. I don't agree that there's there's not stupid people. There's might be ignorant people. Master Meatball says 27 grams is almost one ounce. 28.6 grams equals one ounce. Yep, I agree with you. Never wrong to ask a question. Well, actually, that's one of the questions I was asking today about uh, in 
fourth and fifth grade around here, they have to multiply by decimals or let's just start with multiplied by decimals. I don't know about dividing by decimals, but they asked this math coach, I would call him math instructor about that. And he said, ignore the decimals, do the multiplication, and then try to figure out where the decimal goes. Anyway, it's pretty interesting. Oh, okay. See now mirrors. All right. Let's see. I think last time we were looking at Timbuktu. So this time, what is the capital of Japan and the largest city in the country? It's located on the island of Honshu at the end head of a bay. It's the administrative, financial, educational, and cultural center of Japan. Correct one vote in 2008. Colonel Tom Parker, Pumpkin Hunters, Bishop Wu Tang, Jimmy Crack Horn, Ace, no, not Ace Fan, Easter Ham, Spammer. Yes, the answer is, good job, Johnson. Tokyo is the answer. Tokyo. Let's take a closer look at Tokyo. Yeah, it's fine. I don't really think I've been doing any conversions of ounce to grams either. Here's Tokyo. Look at all this, these people in Tokyo. It's a lot of people. Lots of buildings. Oh, let's do the zoom. You're not looking forward to daylight savings time at all. Sometimes around this time of year, if the sun is so bright. I really need to find my sunglasses, which I misplaced last weekend. And the sun gets so bright this time of year that I get headaches. But so far I haven't gotten headaches, so that's good. Oh, you're getting off work earlier. Nice job, Jackson. You take the week off for DST, DST. I don't want to see pictures of you, Johnson. No, thank you. Wow, Master Beeball. Okay. <sighs> Thank you. Politics. All right, what is the capital? Oh, by the way, um, Tokyo is also among the most modern of the world's city. It's the world's largest city. It was heavily damaged by allied bombing during World War II. It became the capital of the Japanese Empire in 1868 when Japan began a period of intensive modernization. Thanks, Master Meatball. I won't be clicking your link, but Thanks for sharing, I think. Not really. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. How are you? Okay, what is the capital of Ontario, Canada? It's the largest city in the province in southern Ontario on Lake Ontario. It's the largest city in Canada. It's a commercial, financial, industrial, and cultural center of Canada. Greg Johnson and all you awesome people at... On live, starting with pumpkin hunters. The answer is Toronto. Let's, of course, take a closer look at Toronto.
You're Miss Sponheim. I adopted you. A Santhropy. No, I didn't legally adopt anyone, but sure. You can say that. Think of all those gardens and how much effort went into planting them. Here's Toronto. Nice. Ooh, I like this. It's a castle in Toronto. Where is this? That's so cool. I like that castle in Toronto. I think I want to go live there. Is this the back side of it? I don't know. What is this? Um, maybe they'll show me on here. It's... It can't be the wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> that does not make sense. That does not compute. I don't know why I like that castle, but I do like that castle. That's neat. That's very neat. I like that. <laughs> I don't know where this is. View, visit page, maybe. Let's see where it is. Disc. Casa dis de Casto Canada dot com. The site can't be reached. Would I like to translate? Art gallery Ponto Turistico Casa Loma. Now, yes, let's translate. Casa Loma is one of Toronto's most charming tourist spots. Elegance and splendor blend into this medieval style castle that welcomes more than 350,000 tourists a year, plus 250 private events being one of Toronto's most visited sites. I can see that. It was a former residence of the extraordinary Sir Henry Pellot is 98 rooms, a two, 20,000 square meter garden. Wow. That is very cool. All right, Sarah. That was neat. Now to, time to go back here. And back here. Well, never mind. Yes, I f Sunday set the clocks back. All right. What is an independent republic in the West Indies? It com comprising of two islands off the northeast coast of Venezuela. Its capital and largest city is Port of Spain. It's a popular tour resort area. The country is appreciated particularly for its culture, which is composed of a mixture of black, African, Indian, Chinese, European, and Middle Eastern settlers. Yes, spring, spring forward. Did I not say that? Change your clocks, not backward. Forward. Spring forward. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, it snows in South America. Have you heard? Did you ever watch the movie Alive? Where they were basically in an airplane that landed on a mountain that was covered in snow? 
That was in South America. What? What are you talking about? Mountains don't count. Of course mountains count. That was based on a true story. Rugby players from Uruguay. I think they were going to Chile. It's misanthropy. That's hilarious. You've become known as a master of memes. I've never made a meme in my life. All right, the answer to that last question about the independent republic in the West Indies was Trinidad and Tobago. I saw a couple people said that earlier. Good job. What is the capital of Libya, the largest city in Libya, and it's located in the northwestern part of the country? The city dates back to the 7th century BC. The United States warplanes attacked the city in 1986 in retaliation for Libyan terrorist attacks against American city citizens. Correct Johnson and correct Bishop Wu-Tang, an Easterham spammer, Tripoli. From the shores of Fiwa Jima, something, to Tripoli. I don't know, I just know that that's all I know. That's all I know about Tripoli. Now I know a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, good effort, not really. What is an imaginary line that circles the Earth about one quarter of the way from the equator to the North Pole? The sun is directly overhead at the June solstice. Um, he's dead. <laughs> oh, wait, that's a fact, not an opinion. About Gaddafi. Um, what is that? What is that? It's not the international dateline. It's not the time meridian. It's the line of latitude. It goes around the earth the same way that the equator does, but it's smaller than the equator because it's not in the center of the earth. It is the Tropic of Cancer. Good job, Mac Dundee. So close. Um, because they can get energy from the sun, pumpkin hunters? No, I don't know. The Tropic of Cancer. The sun is directly overhead the Tropic of Cancer at the June solstice. What is an imaginary line that circles the Earth about one quarter of the way from the equator to the South Pole. The sun is directly overhead at the December solstice. Correct, pumpkin hunters, so close. It's not this Tropic of Cancer, so it must be the Tropic of... Mike Dundee is correct, and pumpkin hunters is correct, and Johnson is correct. Tropic of Capricorn. Oh, that makes sense that Capricorns are like January. Uh, I know some Capricorns that are born in January, but pretty close to the, the time when the winter solstice happens, but is summer solstice down there, I guess. All right. Maybe he does have the same book. What is a republic in northwestern Africa bordered by Algeria to the west, the Med Mediterranean Sea to the north and east, and Libya to the southeast? In the 6th century BC, it became the center of power for the city of Carthage. It was a French protectorate from 1881 to 1956. 
when it achieved independence. Correct, 218. Good job. Tunisia was the answer. Tunisia. What is a republic straddling southeastern Europe and the Middle East? Correct, pumpkin hunters. Ankara is its capital, but Istanbul is its largest city and former imperial capital. Correct, Johnson in 218. Yes, Turkey straddles to, to the Turkey. Turkey straddles two continents. Oh, let's look at Turkey a little bit. Oh, wait, I'm going to give you one clue and then I'll come back to Turkey. What is a republic in West Central Asia that's capital and largest city is Ash Ashkabad? This former member of the Soviet Union declared its independence in 1991. Correct, 218. Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan. All right, Turk, Turk. I'm moving on to Turkey. Turkey or Aranto. No, I don't want Turkey or Aranto. I want just Turkey. But uh, I can't spell. I can spell. I just did not spell. All right, here's Turkey. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Turkey in detail. The Ottoman Empire emerged in Anatolia, the western portion of Asian Turkey. During the 13th century and it survived until 1918. At its height during the 16th century, the empire stretched from the Persian Gulf, way down here, wait, from the Persian Gulf down here, to Western Algeria and included all of Southeastern Europe. So it was like over here. And over here and all this was Turkey. Pretty amazing. The declining Ottoman Empire allied with Germany, Austria, and Bulgaria in World War I and suffered disintegration and Greek occupation at the end of the war. After the rise of a nationalist movement led by Kemal Ataturk, the Republic of Turkey was established in 1923. In 1871, the archaeologist and scholar Henrik Schleiman discovered the site of ancient Troy on the west coast of Asian Turkey. The country's relations with Greece have been characterized by tension and conflict for centuries. Part of the country, parts of the country were devastated by an earthquake in 2000. Turkey has long resisted separatist demands from militant Kurds in the eastern part of the country. You just ate three tamales and you're still hungry? Uh, is that all you ate today or is that like... I ha Did you... Do you normally are this hungry? Well, you could. You might want to get checked out. I don't know, Miss Anthropy. I don't know the answer to that question, 218. That's a personal question. You'd have to ask David if, if he wants to discuss that with you. I don't know if he, did, he would. Yeah, that's true. If, there's a, if they're the little tiny tamales like this, that's not a lot of food. Compared to the tamales that are like this, that's a decent amount of food. You know what you need to drink? If you're on a diet, you can drink some water, though. Hmm. 
What is this? A loud boom and a bright flash over western Washington shakes homes. Celery is calorie negative, I suppose if you This is Dabu seven. I Grace Harbor Emergency Management said. Interesting. Oh, wait. David claimed, made a claim earlier, and I wanted to research that. I guess so, Easter ham spammer. But it does have a lot of salt in it. Celery does natural salt, but I'm sure it's way better for you than like a salt, salt shaker. So, all right. Claim. More kids die of brain cancer than other, any other thing. That's why I, I heard David say that. Whoa, it is September 16, 2016. NBC News, brain cancer is the leading cancer killer of kids. It's not the leading killer of kids, but it's the leading cancer killer of kids. So yes, brain of the cancer deaths, brain cancer is the leading cancer. Oh, what, what's the other kids cause of death? Of kids. Well, there are causes of death. I mean, should I research that? Oh no, I just I thought, don't... what what's the leading cause of death? That's what I was wondering, because that's what I heard was brain cancer. Well, compared to other cancers, you were right. But I just don't know what the leading cause is. Is it asthma? I don't even know if I want to Google that, but okay, I guess I bothered. could. It's just, it is serious, you know, to, to worry about killing kids and radio frequencies and our oh, well, government's doing nothing to, to help save them. Not even a public service announcement warning of the dangers of cell phones. It's just amazing. Not even I'll do this. Leading causes of death in the U.S. by age. That will be good. CDC. It just a, it's a serious thing when, when a government doesn't even bother warning the people of the country that, that something dangerous could happen to their children. And that would be our country not warning children of the cell phones. Right. I'm not talking about exploding cell phones. I'm talking about the radiation that emitted from them into your brain. I gotta get a phone call. Jason. Uh, Jason, we don't take your calls. I think I explained that to you a couple times. Okay, so kids that are less than one years old, the leading cause of death is congenital anomalies. Oh, okay. But from basically, ironically, the leading cause of death in the United States, this is in 2015. Right. Here, let me show you guys. Okay. The leading cause of death, unintentional injury. Wow. That could be a, uh, that could be like battered children. They're, the kids could be, be tortured and beaten up. That's that's a serious leading cause of death. We've got a, a major problem. Look at that. But then underneath. Wow that for ages 5 to 14, you're right about malignant neoplasms. Right. Unintentional injury. Wow. But unintentional injuries. That is really, So, really, like, yeah. use a ladder. Yeah. <laughs> use a step stool. Be, careful. be careful. Be aware yeah. of your surroundings. Falling off monkey bars and breaking your neck could lead to your death. That's a serious thing. And then in my age group, let's see. Unintentional injury. 
then it's, but I, I, there's more people that die that are my age than children. Unintentional injury, malignant neoplasms, heart disease, suicide, homicide, liver disease, diabetes, cerebrovascular, HIV, septicemia. Where are pharmaceutical companies on this chart? Yeah, this is from the CDC. People over 65, it's heart disease, malignant neoplasms, respiratory diseases, chronic low respiratory disease, cerebrovascular, Alzheimer's, diabetes, unintentional injury, the flu and pneumonia, nephritis, and septicemia. Septicemia starts to become an issue at my age group. I guess people become sedentary or something. I don't know. Yes, unintentional injury, falling in water, ponds, lakes. No, I, well, you know, not, I haven't been lately, Johnson. I get tired. I'm tired, but that's about it. David would look at the chart, see it's made by the CDC and throw it away. What? What? Why? Whoa, that's interesting. Look at the, the, I want to show you guys this. This is interesting how they ranked it. So these blues are unintentional injury. And obviously after 44, people get more, anyway, you could say people get more aware and don't do unintentional injury, but that the numbers go, are super high, 25 to 34 for unintentional injury. But look at this, the green here is suicide. I guess people, once they're over 65, they don't commit suicide. Overall, the highest, but these are the totals, deaths. The highest is heart disease, then malignant neoplasms, then chronic low respiratory diseases, and then unintentional injury. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess after 65, you might as well write it out. I guess after 55, they even think that. It drops, well, I guess it doesn't drop that much. Still pretty. They say it's high here, but ironically, there's a higher number that commit suicide here. This is highlighting unintentional injury deaths. So this is unintentional, different types of unintentional deaths. Mostly these are motor vehicle traffic and these are all motor vehicle traffic. 
And then this screen is unintentional poisoning. Okay. And then it talks about firearms in the white. I wonder if they have a chart for that. Oh, this is highlighting the violence. So these green are all suicide by firearm or suicide suffocation suicides. And the red are homicides. This is homicides with the firearm. The num it looks like the third, fourth leading cause of death, but ironically, it's um, there's 121 homicides here and 4,140 homicides here. And cutting is a homicide down here. And they have different, anyway. Yeah. Okay, I know. I'm sorry. I did not mean to be morbid. I'm just trying to find the answer to a question. Yeah, it's hard when you turn 70. You look at Hillary. Thank you. Yep. I know it was depressing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, there's um, road safe crash statistics. Yeah, because those are like the biggest, some of the biggest, the first one or second cause, nearly 1.3 million people. An additional 20 to 50 million are injured or disabled from motor vehicle crashes. Motor vehicle crashes. That's it. Let's get rid of cars. No, I'm just kidding. I personally think I know that David does not agree with me at all. But if we had self-driving cars, they would be safer. Uh, I'll give you the CDC links. Yeah, David doesn't think it's a good idea, 898, but okay. I, yeah, self-driving cars could be hacked, but I think that they're less likely to be hacked and one and I think that the human error you know sleeping or there's so many things that can happen with human error well you know if you live in a city or you're able to live if you're able to sustain yourself in your house even better if you don't need a car great I feel like I need a car so Sadly, I'm a little sad that I feel that I need a car, but I do feel like I need a car. I live a pretty far piece from town. Misanthropy, you say that's the thing. People didn't need cars until massive cities came to be. Now you're pretty much forced to own one. Yeah, you know, actually, though, if you live in a city, you don't have to own a car. There's usually, like, mass transportation and things like that. So, ironically, it's, like, the people that live in the suburbs that feel like they have to work in a city that have to own the cars. 
I mean, that's kind of my situation. Because I don't live in the city. Like, I know somebody who lives like a block from his work. So he gets to walk to work. But sometimes he still drives, which I don't understand. But you know, when you live Yeah. Well, you know what, misanthropy? I was thinking, what about little cars, though, that could go on trains? I've seen these little vehicles that can go onto the trains. So people still have their own space. And I agree that that is a big issue in mass transit. That people want their own space. They don't want to sit next to someone. Johnson says, time is a dimension. It's not actually real. Is the English Channel Tunnel train like that? Maybe. I don't know. I don't really know. Oh, that's a good one, 989. Nice rhyme. Time is a measurement of time. <laughs> Minutes, hours, seconds, is that all relative? Uh, events, past and present. Future. Time allows you to plan events. Time is an ocean and it ends in the shore. That's a good one. Is time linear? Um, yes, you can put time on a timeline. That's, I guess that's why they call it timeline because it's linear. But, and some people believe, and I sometimes believe, what if all events, maybe it's not linear, maybe it's a big conglomeration and they all exist together. Okay, that was a nice break. Thank you. We started talking about time. time. Keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking into the future. No, actually we're talking about time. Time is amazing, isn't it? If it's an illusion and it relative is. and you know I I've had a very unique time experience. Whenever you and I went together in the spa, we time flew. Whenever I'm hanging out with my friend, I have a friend, and when I hang out with her, I always feel like I talk to her for like two hours, Yeah. but it only feels like it's been maybe 20 minutes. And it's like, what happened to the time? Two hours go by and it feels like 20 minutes, yeah. Time is kind of elusive that way, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Oh. I, I would trust the CDC to uh, to declare how many people die, you know? That's about all they can do is tabulate pandemics and things. I made you some Brussels sprouts with uh, black olives. So. Oh, thank you. Enjoy. You can have all of that. Oh, I'm full. I had like two big waffles, three big waffles. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Uh, hefty super waffles jeez peanut butter and blueberries maple syrup yogurt i don't do gangsta man I, i'm a more of a, of a hip-hop kind of guy yeah I'm, I'm less rap more hip-hop well i i thought it would be a nice mix i i took the bacon grease that was in the stove and i i pre-cooked the brussels sprouts and then Finished them off with the bacon grease and the black olives. Really makes for a tasty dish, I'll tell you. Up here in Washington, they take uh, Brussels sprouts and pan fry them in, in like fat. They blacken them. It's pretty good. They're very good blackened. Brussels sprouts, yeah. But I think I need back off of the uh, the pancakes and waffles for a while. 
Yeah, it's all GMO, I know. It was a G GMO wheat product. I was not happy with it. Actually, it's no, it's oat, oat uh, waffle mix. Oats are not genetically modified. There is no genetically modified oat out there. But Quaker was caught recently with a lot of glyphosate in their oat products when they were trying to ship into Singapore. And Singapore's standards are even higher than anything around the world. We don't have standards for a Roundup glyphosate. Our country allows that in the food. Our leaders are allowing our food to be poisoned as it enters our bodies. But the good news is you have to eat that kind of food for 40 years to really have a major effect. I try to lessen the, the concern a lot of people have because it, it's freaky to think that they're poisoning us and they don't even care. I heard people are dying all over the place from cars. More people die from automobiles than from guns. So the, you people who want to ban guns, I mean, really, you might as well ban automobiles too. Floppy-eared Okapi. I'm sorry, the image has been denied access to my hard drive due to irregular function. Oh, if you get rid of the, the tail end, they'll work on the Google browser. Wow, look at this. This is a unique creature. The floppy deer Ogapi. Would you just look at that? That's neat. It's kind of like half zebra, half uh, Malamut, half. Uh, what the hell is it? Gee, it sure is a cute thing. It eats the leaves and branches and it loves its little onions and. I was I started the show out with a kind of a nature thing because I feel nature is calling us. I feel the the nature call for some reason. Yeah, wildlife. Okay, we've had enough of that. I'm getting a little bit uh, transfixed by its slowness. Loyal dog refuses to leave hospital where owner died four months ago. I was reading this article over there on this computer, the other computer, because I saw it earlier in the kitchen. It's really a, a, an amazing story. The young, the dog was apparently chased the ambulance after a 59 year old man or owner was stabbed in October. And now the dog lingers around the hospital wondering where his owner is. Where is my owner? You gotta be in there somewhere. Can you imagine this dog will never have closure? He's gonna be eternally tortured, his soul. And I, I could make a big deal about this, but I do want you to realize that the people in China do eat dogs. So try not to get too emotionally involved with this dog, even though it's still waiting for its master. And people are eating them right now in China. Yeah, if you if you have ever have road rage, realize somebody's out there who just as messed up, if not worse than you are, and that means deadly a deadly combo. I'm David, not John, but you can call me John. You want a different take on personal realities? Oh, read Carl Jung's view on the human shadow. You know, I was just reading that the other day. It's really good reading. Yeah, all the neo-Freudians like Carl Jung were really onto uh, the shadow theory. In Jungian psychology, the shadow, or ID, or id, if you will, may refer to an unconscious aspect of the personality which the conscious ego does not identify in itself, or two, the entirety of the unconscious, i.e. everything of which a person is not fully conscious. In short, the shadow is the dark side. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll read more about that later when we uh, forget about reality. But right now we're immersed in reality and the Donald Trump of our, of our current reality is not very smart. Meeting Kim Jong-un would be like walking into a Russian roulette game. Really, what, I could not imagine anything more foolish for him to do right now. Opening a dialogue does not mean meeting shake to shake, hand to hand. I mean, come on. We've done this. Okay, 
you live this life already and this is a parallel universe oh okay I remember you chatted this 600 years ago Dave the CEO is his own show oh do I have to read this no 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 I don't do Jeremy Kyle I don't do any of that stuff sorry the English violent thing that you do Mark Dundee says Hachika Gazunhai to you too there is no such thing as as Hachik but thank you okay don't be evil is is now Google that their motto was don't be evil now they're collaborating with the dark side or as Carl Jung put it the shadow of our personality the id Google admits to collaboration with illegal US drone murder program nice do no evil but collaborate with an illegal US drone murder program oh okay in another milestone in the growing integration between the military intelligence complex and Silicon Valley Google's parent company Alphabet has confirmed that it has provided software to identify targets used in the illegal US government drone murder program since initiating its drone assassination program in 09 the United States claims to have killed close to 3,000 combatants with drone strikes internal military documents show that for every one person targeted by a drone strike nine bystanders are killed so a collateral damage of nine bystanders meaning that the true toll of the US military airborne terrorism campaign in Yemen Somalia Afghanistan Pakistan and Iraq potentially rises to the tens of thousands of people killed by drones so isn't that what you know America as the land of the home of the brave land of the free and uh, the murderous drone program yeah that's what I like to remember us by the murderous drone program that your tax dollars continually fund without any excess or cutbacks yeah we're talking surgical strikes hybrid yeah just like the ones I was talking about but they're not very surgical you see when the the points in the ground do not match the information that we have up in the sky that's when we're not supposed to use drones but when Donald Trump eight days into the presidency decide to use a drone on Yemen of all places the place that we've already had litigatory problems with killing people unnecessarily Donald Trump ordered the death of 31 innocent people eight days into his presidency can you imagine such a murderous act by a man like that I can't it just disgusts me to think that this man is still our president and nobody in America even gave a crap it's like oh yeah we killed 31 people yeah big deal four million people in, in Southeast Asia died what that North Vietnamese that Viet Cong Jane Fonda she she tried to stop it but she screwed up yeah I'm really proud to be American yeah so let's talk about being proud of our technology what do you say huh so when Kim and Donald meet in a few months it will be like Godzilla and Rodat I don't know all I can tell you is it's it's a comical thing to think that they're gonna meet when Trump and Kim meet it will be like Harry met Sally I I don't think Trump should do it I don't think Trump should, should testify in front of Robert Mueller I think Mueller's gonna have to dig a little deeper than that if so if he testifies in front of Robert Mueller I mean he'll be coming home the next day oh we're going to North Korea now oh okay and then on his way to North Korea he'll be told that that he's been charged with perjury so then he lands in North Korea knowing that he's been charged with perjury and he's meeting a man who probably would put him in Camp 22 if he had a chance Yemen the Yemenis yes right Yemen I said Yemen yes what's your problem did you hear put put out took out another double agent he used a rare nerve toxin spy and his daughter in a critical condition first responder in critical condition too yes I heard yes Putin is trying to eliminate and it I do believe that that agent is working it was privy to all of the secrets of the dossier as well 
new developments in the Mueller case. Uh, he is pursuing a evidence in the Chaisel's meeting in 2017, where he believes that the I believe that the, he believes that Trump was involved in creating a back channel to the Kremlin. So that's the current state of things right now, along with the indictments that are currently still pending. We did find out one thing from the recent information is that is that he's putting uh, plea deals on the on the table. There have been plea deals offered. So this recent Sam Nunberg uh, disastrous uh, joke of a man who claimed he wasn't going to do any kind of a speak in front of a grand jury. Now it says he'll do whatever they ask him to do. I mean, it's kind of a joke. But during that, we found out that plea agreements, he said that plea agreements were offered to him. So, yeah. So there could be plea, plea deals all over the place. Manafort uh, has said he didn't do it. He's insisting on his innocence. So he's going to the mat. Uh, it all kind of hinges on uh, whether uh, whether anybody changes their testimony. Michael Flynn may, may decide to plead not guilty after all, they're saying. The Republicans are saying that. Uh, there's also a new development in the Nick Cruz case. Just like I said initially, uh, it didn't look like his plea of guilty was even warranted. He is now pleading not guilty. They don't know what to think about this young man. They don't know. They, he thought that, they, uh, or they're saying he thought something, because I don't think he can speak. I think he's mentally ill. But he thought that he would be getting no death penalty if he pled guilty. So now he's pleading not guilty tentatively. And I think that the attorney should re really plead not guilty by reason of false flag. But uh, if he doesn't want to do that or she doesn't want to do that, not guilty by reason of uh, insanity. Because if they can prove that these people died at that event, that would be interesting in court. You know, the whole case that happened in Massachusetts that put the young Jokart Sharnev into the jail where he's going to face the death sentence in Massachusetts for uh, the alleged Boston bombing attack. That entire thing was Judy Clark blew it, and she never blew it. She just completely threw the case away. She didn't bring up any critical data or information. That young man was carrying a backpack into the, into the Boston Marathon attack, and they had video of him carrying the backpack out of the Boston Marathon attack. How could he be blamed for such a, an act? And how many people really did die at that event? They say three, but I seriously doubt that. So a lot of this crap is just absolute BS going on behind the, the scrim of judicial BS. Even this recent uh, restraining order that Trump got from a retired administrative judge and what were the grounds to get the restraining order against this Stormy Daniels uh, that she uh, was threatening to tell the truth about the relationship? I mean, that's not grounds for a restraining order. I'm sorry. Only a freak would give a restraining order to somebody based on the, the testimony that she said she had sex with a guy. I mean, really? You can imagine what uh, Donald would like. He'd probably like to get a restraining order on everybody in America. And I think he should run that through his, his War Department. Maybe Jeff Sessions, if you got nothing to do, you might want to look into that. I'm getting a restraining order against the entire American population. Yeah. Well, if, 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 if. Okay. Two SWAT officers suspended for running in to help at Parkland Massacre. Yeah. They're suspended for actually trying to help. Right, makes sense, right? Wow, seriously, these people were just out in their their day duty. It was uh, there was going to be a code red. It was a standard operation where crisis units go out and pretend to do a reenactment, and somebody up above said, "No, we're going to make this live," meaning we're going to pretend like people are dying. Well, anybody who actually did anything, like running into the Parkland Massacre, they're going to get suspended because the protocol is for everyone to wait outside and do nothing and then get reprimanded later by uh, Scott Israel, the most corrupt sheriff in America. And I'm sure there are a few other ones that could keep compete with him, like Bob Newcham and others uh, that are doing a terrible job as police chiefs. Okay, Washington, D.C. patrol is lackluster. Oh.
This is in DC, man. This is Sheffield, England. If you're going to represent something, please don't post the link of something irrelevant. Thank you. Washington, D.C. petrol is lackluster. It just doesn't help me, man. Hello. You people know a lot about trucks. Bing, bing, bong. Thank you very much. Oh, you touched my top. You people know a lot about trucks. Bing, bing, bong. Thank you very much. Oh, you touched my top. It's getting a little too weird. Thank you. Bing, bing. Okay. As Stormy Daniels prepares to tell her story, Mother is gathering evidence. Okay. Stormy, what you got? Jim Moray calls his interview with the adult film star. He recalls his interview with the adult film star. Oh, yes. Daniels says only she and Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, signed the agreement, and therefore it's not valid. I agree with Stormy Daniels on that. She began an affair in the summer of 2006, and around the same time, First Lady Melania gave birth to her only child with the president, son Barron. She said the affair continued until 07. Her lawyer, Michael Avenetti, says Daniels wants to be free to tell her story. My client wants an opportunity to tell her story, to tell the truth about what happened and what didn't happen, he told CNN Wednesday. The non-disclosure agreement reportedly says that if Daniel revealed any details about her alleged relationship with the president, she would have to pay $1 million for each breach. Last month, the adult film star, whose real name is Stephanie Clifford, spoke to Inside Edition Jim Moray in her first television interview since news of the alleged scandal broke. At that time, she said she was definitely surprised at the size of the story, adding she was also very surprised at how much stuff is just completely made up about me. Well, that's not what the In Touch uh, story showed us. Oh yeah, we got all the all the details, the sordid details. In Touch Weekly, yeah. There's an entire thing on her. She released the whole story way ahead of time. So here is the uh, complete story, and you can check it out. Here's the link. Yes, Michelle Obama quoted, said that Barack loves his home country of Kenya, meaning Barack was born in Kenya. That's what I thought. It'd be great to go back to the truth. Wouldn't it be nice to just live in the, in the truth? Living in the truth. Yeah, so here's a great explosive story you can read about. Read all about it. When was the first time you met Donald? It was a charity golf tournament. It was a more of a business move on your end? Of course. What happened next? So we went up to the room. This is the whole story. So this is all conversation while you're eating? Yeah, like before, during, and after. We hung out for a while. And this is the same day, the first you met? Yeah, it was definitely dark when I left. It was only the two of you in the room, the bodyguard stayed outside? Yeah, no one else ever came in, he stood outside. Well, she said she could describe his junk in detail. So, it's stormy. Now, let's take a look at the uh, the alleged statement that Bernie Sanders tweeted today. Let's take a look. Here's a man who said that women all want to get raped. Is that what he said originally? Okay, let me see. He wrote that when he was a younger man. Is it? Or is it the porn star and... And a porn star. Porn star. And the porn star. Okay. The president and a porn star. Porn star. And the porn star. Okay, viewers, here is a hard question. Stormy Daniels is suing President Trump. A porn star. Today, the United States Senate is dealing with the enormously important issue of the efforts to deregulate some of the largest banks in America and perhaps put them on the path to another failure and a massive taxpayer bailout. That's a big issue. The adult film actress. Porn star. Hush agreement. A porn star sues the president. So here's my question. Which issue is getting more coverage on CNN and the other major networks today? A porn star sued the president. Is it 
the deregulation of major banks. Porn star suing the president. A porn star. Porn star is suing the president. Or is it the porn star and Donald Trump? You know, one thing I can't stand is a hypocrite. And Bernie, uh, in a 1972 essay on rape, he wrote, Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign tried to distance himself from a 72 essay in which he wrote that a woman fantasizes about being raped by three men simultaneously. He actually wrote that. And Snopes did this check to see if it was true, and bingo, it's true. He wrote in an essay that women fantasize about being raped by three men simultaneously. There you have it. So yeah, let's call a spade a spade and Bernie Sanders is exactly what he is. Bernie Sanders. Yeah. She's not too bad, no. She's a nice looking woman, Stormy, da Stormy Daniels is a very pretty woman. And a lot of you men with breast, breast fetishes would really like her. <laughs> it's not that I don't trust Snopes, it's that I find it funny that they flip on these issues. They wrote a scathing article on on what Martin Luther King Jr. was all about and how he used to pick up white prostitutes and beat them up. Yeah. Well, look at misanthropy. Some men are willing to put up with a little silicon to get the, the lift that they're looking for. I personally am a natural. Uh, I, I prefer women with natural breasts. And... The bigger they are, the it's more of a turnoff for me. But you know, for for some guys, it's like that's all they think about. Hey, whatever. I mean, I'm not here to judge you or tell you what to do or what you believe in. It isn't the silicon; it's how bad labor they were done. But why why do you have to? You know, if you met a woman, for instance, and you found out she had silicon implants. It would be a total turnoff for you. It wouldn't matter how well they were done. You'd still freak out about it. I know you well enough to know that. You keep asking her, why don't you have them removed? <laughs> I'm not here to quote Snopes. I'm just here to tell you that, hey, they really did find out that Bernie did say that, okay? Are you, t are you totally in denial or something? I mean, Bernie is, he's a total hypocrite. He sold out to Hillary. He drives an Audi R8. What more can I tell you? Well, I hope that Trump brings his rocket ship to uh, to North Korea and his button too. He'll need the button when he goes arrives there. I still can't believe he said he would do it. I would like to bring the button and a specially equipped rocket ship so that I have total control over the nukes in case something bad happens to me. Yeah, you'd be fed to the dogs, Donald. Don't go to North Korea. What What the hell's wrong with you, man? Jeez. Who gives this guy advice? I, I think Bannon should step back and <laughs> give him some more advice or something. I don't even know who's giving him advice anymore. I mean, H.R. McMaster doesn't talk to him, but the, he has to work there. I don't trust it, and I, I care about Trump. Even though I, I run him down all the time, I do care about, he's a human being, he's an American. We protect our own. Although he could be a traitor, I don't know. We shall see, time will tell. It's, you like the, it's a good song, the Snow, there's a new Snope song, really? I had no idea. Checking for the new Snope song. Yeah, I don't really see a new Snopes song. Uh, is this teenager in danger? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't even think there is a story there. Koreans are going to infiltrate the U.S. when Donald is over there. Could be. There is a song, which I created, and I've been doing a little bit more audio work. I've got a new one. A, a few new stingers that I've been working on, like Bouncy. 
America is ready for a change. A third party is the change we need. Accountability in government, term limits for Congress, media verification, and a fresh approach to fixing our environment. We need a new direction for our nation. Join us in the middle of the political spectrum for our nightly commentary and discussion at America's Third Party. Mr. Wright, we're ready to go. This is it. We're doing it every night. We don't do Skype. You know, I, I really want to do Skype. I think I could open up a Skype conversation with a lot of you, but I have to call you. Oh, you're being bullied again? What's happening, Jackson? You're such a popular guy here. You get to be bullied. Yeah, I think it's pretty uh, okay that uh, we're done with the Stormy Daniels story. That was fun. Yeah, look at the red eye in, in that picture. She's clearly the, being taken over by the demons. Closing, looking in at the red eye. Yeah. The demon of lascivious adultery. Case in point, a look at these two lascivious adulterers gathering together. Think about it. Donald Trump now being pursued more than Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. And here we thought Harvey Weinstein was 70 rape allegations and, and Oprah French kissing his ear there was going to, you know, face prosecution. They still haven't levied any charges against him. But, oh, yeah, Stormy Daniels put together a nice, healthy lawsuit against Donald for what he did to her. All right. French kissing in the USA. Couple of drinks, Dave. She looks way better. Couple, yeah. I know. Your mom bullies you? It happens. Yeah. That's what moms think they are. They control you. Oh, you're looking at a, at a farm to plant to the roots of ATP. Just need to go to a, a more million campaign funds. Well, yeah, the thing is we don't have any money, Fishware. That's the thing. No money at all except for whatever is in our account, which is not enough. We're not about the money. We're, we're just about talking and using the internet. We aren't about making money doing this. We're, I've never made a penny doing it. They've censored me. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been forked over to Mark, from what I hear, to keep us down, because we're so popular worldwide on UHF. But I don't get a penny out of any of this, and I don't care. I see the country slipping into a hole and I'd like to save it. That that means more to me than anything. Salisbury spy poisoning an act of war against the UK. So this poisoning that occurred, no doubt by the Russians against this Russian spy who defected. 
Definitely, a, it's a brazen act of war against Britain if Moscow is found responsible for a nerve agent attack on UK soil, the government has been told. Yeah. Yeah, it truly is. And the poisoning of Russian double agent Sergei Stripple and daughter Yulia uh, was described by Home Secretary Amber Rudd in England on Thursday as an attempted murder in the most cruel and public way. The cabinet minister promised a robust response once responsibility for the attack is established. But she told the House of Commons her current priority is on the immediate response to the incident. So, Theresa May, may, may or may not respond. We shall see. Okay, what's your ATP RB on the loan? No, I'm not, that's not, no, that's not going to work. The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. Are you saying your your berries are getting dark? <laughs> that sounds a little weird. Oh, I hope they are too. But, you know, it doesn't even matter. I was never doing this for any personal gain, so I don't even care if I'm not broadcasting to, you know, UHF viewers. If I am, great, but it doesn't matter if I'm not because I'm doing this because it has to be done. Our society is being controlled by so many people, it's unbelievable people that have money and they don't even live in America the Russian distraction is very uh, interesting though I mean it's it's definitely keeping us going it it the fact that I predicted all of this six months before the election and here it is playing out like I wrote the script for it is kind of amazing I've got this amazing ability to look into the future and see things as a chess player looks into a uh, as a chess player looks into the future of a game and sees moves ahead I truly do see things and as they play out more so than most people I think I spent a lot of time thinking about the trajectory our country's on and it looks like we've been bought off by a, a cadre of very wealthy masons and uh, foreign entities that control our banks, like the uh, the Rothschilds, who run the Federal Reserve from a remote location in Switzerland. Trump eats McDonald's he fears being poisoned and orders staff not to touch his toothbrush. Oh yeah, there's the guy is very germophobic, and I don't blame him. That's why it's shocking to me that he would accept a, an offer by Kim Jong Un to go to North Korea. I think Trump's just in the. Uh, in the pra practice of telling people what they want to hear and he just does it to everybody not even thinking through what's going to happen but Trump eats McDonald's because he fears being poisoned and orders staff not to touch his toothbrush the shocking claims about his first days in the White House have been revealed President Trump's fear of being poisoned is one of the main reasons why he prefers pre-made fast food like McDonald's at the start of his life in the in the White House he told the cleaning staff not to touch anything in his room especially his toothbrush if he and now former chief strategist were di weren't dining at a, together at 6.30 p.m., Trump would retire to the residence where he allegedly ate cheeseburgers in bed. Sometimes he would be watching three TV screens while ranting about the media and phone calls to friends. Author Michael Wolff claims that, the Trump, that Trump added a lock to his bedroom door in the early days of the administration and slept separate from Melania. Yeah. So fear of being poisoned is very real, and Donald is, you know, clearly he has every right to be worried. Ridiculous accusation, and one that I'm pretty sure we've addressed many times from here before. And if that's in reference to comments made... God, she just... Does she sound the same way every time she, she speaks? I mean, it's as though she's reciting off of a script. You know, Sarah Sanders... Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Made by Mr. Bannon. I'd refer you back to the ones that he made previously on 60 Minutes. Did the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., commit treason? 
Uh, I think that is a ridiculous accusation and one that I'm pretty sure we've addressed many times from here before. And if that's in reference to comments made by Mr. Bannon, I'd refer you back to the ones that he made previously on 60 Minutes where he called uh, the collusion with Russia about this president a total farce. So I think I would uh, look back at that if anybody's been inconsistent. The collusion with, him, with Russia? Hasn't been the president with Russia about this, the collusion with Russia, uh, the collusion with Russia. She said the collusion with Russia. Oh my God, the woman's illiterate. She's in extremely unpleasant in every way imaginable, yeah. But she's the collusion with Russia? The woman can't speak. She, she's, did she even graduate from college? The Fallujah of Collusia? You're having relations with Sarah Huckabee right now? Are you in bed with her? Really? Well, that's personal between you and her. You better get back to that. Give her what she wants. She's the boss. She comes off as kind of like a woman who would, you know, be a dominatrix in bed, doesn't she? Russia about this president a total farce. So I think I would uh, look back at that. If anybody's been inconsistent, it's been him. Certainly hasn't been the president or this administration. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> I just I just can't warm up to that that whole routine she has. She can speak. She definitely can speak. Daniel Frizzello, a charge with powder, letters to Trump's son, others. You mean the guy actually caught the guy? What did he put his his return address on the letters? Dandro, Daniel Frizzello, charged with powder letters. A Massachusetts, Massachusetts child care worker was charged Thursday with sending the threatening letter filled with white powder to Donald Trump Jr. that sent his wife to the hospital along with four other bizarre letters mailed to a California prosecutor, a law professor, a senator, and an actor, Antonio Sabato Jr. Daniel Frizzello, 24, was arrested after what prosecutors called a textbook federal investigation that traced the unsigned letters to him after he also ordered a, a glitter bomb for one of the recipients using his own name. While well, they were unsigned letters, the powder uh, on the letters was not dangerous. Well, okay. He had a job at the Catholic Charities Peabody Child Care Center. He's charged with mailing threats to injure and false information to hoaxes. Oh, he's a real winner. Look at that. Well, it's good we pulled this guy out of commission. Yeah, he's a real winner. He'll be spending a few years in a federal penitentiary at Supermax. Either that or he'll go into re-education in the gulags, in Russia. Whew. He's obsessed with dirty panties. He, don't tell him to go to Tokyo. They sell those in a, in a kiosk, I understand. Women's underwear that are, that's, that's already been worn. I, I, I'd have to see it to believe it, to confirm it, but somebody said that. her dad. Well, that's good. I'm glad that uh, Mike Huckabee is now facing some problems too. It's not an easy run for him. Mike Huckabee just stepped down from a... from the county music board, the country music board, citing political issues, the CMA. I don't know the specifics about the story, but her dad, Mike Huckabee, talk about nepotism. Jeez. God. Revise, resigns from the country music board, citing political and religious intolerance. Here he is. So we have all seen music and movie stars join their voices in support of inclusiveness and tolerance, but it often doesn't extend to include tolerance of real political or social diversity of thought. This week, Governor Mike Huckabee, never shy about his Christian and conservative beliefs, earned a spot on the Country Music Association's Foundation Board, a nonprofit organization that helps to support music in schools. But within hours, the uproar began. 
Music executive Jason Owen led the charge, telling the CMA, quote, Huckabee uses language that has a profoundly negative impact upon young people all across this country, not to mention how harmful and damaging his deep involvement with the NRA is. What a shameful choice, he said. The governor resigned from the board to avoid causing, quote, unnecessary distraction to their work, and now he is speaking out in a new piece today that is titled Hate Wins. Governor Huckabee joins me now. Hate Wins. Uh, good to see you. <laughs> Hate Wins. Governor, um, you know, you write beautifully uh, in this letter about the impact of music on your life, and I would imagine that that was what led you. Hey, look at look at we got a Bernie Tard in the room over here. You libtard, guest nine four zero seven eight seven nine five is a classic libtard. Thinks that just because I'm I'm mentioning Mike Huckabee on Fox makes me a bad guy. Can you imagine? God, you just dispense with everybody on the right, don't you? You're like a Barack Obama. Well, let, let's be clear. We're, we're going to have uh, conversations about uh, health care, uh, town hall meetings. He never had a single town hall meeting. You libtards are all the same. You're just like the far right neoconservatives, like Mike Huckabee. They won't talk to anybody. See, both sides won't talk to itself or each other. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, if you can't handle being called bitter for your constant vitriol against a president, I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Really. Really, Rose. Yeah. Look, at just because we don't like Donald Trump doesn't mean we're traitors to our country. Trump himself is, if he really did collude with the Russians, he's a traitor. So we have to focus on who's American, who's not. You Democrats, Republicans better realize that. I mean, we tr lose the party affiliation. We're going to have to drop that. Because we really have to focus on what matters, our country, over Russia, or over North Korea. I hope Donald has a nice trip to North Korea. A man who won't even eat, eat food made by a White House chef, wants to buy burgers and eat burgers all the time and drink out of Diet Cokes that he wipes the lid off and blows on. You gotta wonder, man. I really, I really am beginning to wonder, is Donald Trump even thinking at all? How can a man that homo that xenophobic, that uh, that uh, freaked out about germs, go visit a, a known killer of many hundreds of thousands of men? I just it's like, what's going on? Hominobic. I wonder if there's a, a word for heterophobic, for homosexuals that are heterophobic. Have you ever heard anybody call somebody a heterophobic? He is heterophobic. Yep. Afraid of being straight. You got your number. Okay, we'll dispense with Mike Huckabee and the adulterer Donald Trump. Alleged adulterer. Telling her own story. Google collaborates with the illegal U.S. drone program that's killed tens of thousands of people. Google do, does no evil? Uh, I think not. They do. This poor dog can't find and never will find his master. So somebody might want to, you know, be nice to him and say, it's okay, buddy. You can come home with me. It's okay. And the weird sound of Something dropped down a hole. That is freaky. Well, let's be clear. And with that one too, that was funny about how that tree grew up around a smart meter and the, it burned around the smart meter. It didn't even grow. And Trump accepts the invitation to meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, which makes no sense at all. Well, I hope it works out for everybody. I can't say it's a bad idea, even because I'm not going. But, but uh, yeah, good luck. And we ran across this little uh, 
hive, a hornet hive of uh, connections. We're trying to figure out really why Donald Trump was working with the Russians all these years. And it it's becoming more and more obvious that this little gathering of Hasidic Jews that Ivanka meets with, with her family and Jared's family and Trump meets them is a direct connection to Vladimir Putin. Yes. And they're not really Jewish because there are a lot of them are Ashkenazi, but they do meet as a political group called Jewish. But they're not Jewish per se, they're Ashkenazi. I'm trying to explain to you, you're not quite understanding the whole difference between Jews and Ashkenazis. You're still struggling with that. Ask a Nazi, you'll know. But two decades ago, as the Russian president said about the consolidating power in one side of the world, he embarked on a project to supplant his country's existing Jewish civil society and replace it with a parallel structure loyal to him. On the other side of the world, the brash Manhattan developer, Donald Trump, was working to get a piece of the massive flows of capital that were fleeing the former Soviet Union in search of stable assets in the West, especially real estate, and seeking partners in New York with the ties to the region. And their respective ambitions led the two men, along with Trump's future son-in-law, Jared Kushner, to build a set, a set of close overlapping relationships in a small world that intersects on Shabbat, an international Hasidic movement. Most people have never even heard of it. And this particular group, the Lebedevich group, uh, has ties going to Russia and, and to New York and Trump. So therein lies the connection, and that's why Trump has been doing the bidding of uh, Putin, Putin. And the, the work of these Zionists, these Ashkenazis, lingers behind the scene, driving our country closer and closer to the brink of war with a country that is seemingly trying to control Trump at the same time. It's very scary to even imagine what it would be like if we were at war with Russia in Syria, with Trump getting phone calls from Putin, who he admires very much. Pretty messed up. Are you tracking someone online? She logged in. I'm not big on Adobe. Well, they don't put any disclaimers about their flash issues. You know, if they would admit there's a security issue and the browsers are steering away from their flash issues, that would be great. But try getting Adobe to admit anything. They don't admit anything, it seems. The international corruption worked to a large degree as the USSR disintegrated politically. Yeah. And people like Trump, uh, you know, latched onto those loan guarantees from Russia. Eric Trump admitted to his dad that, uh, actually to a couple of golfers, he was talking to investors. Eric Trump admitted that his dad has a $100 million line of credit with Russia. Vanity Fair did an article about this. Here it is. Reportedly bragged about ex access to $100 million in Russian money. Look at that. We don't rely on American banks. We have all the funding we need out of Russia, Eric Trump said to a couple of investors on a golf course. Now, Vanity Fair takes their journalism pretty seriously. They've been sued many times. Well, they have not been sued over this. Eric Trump really did say it. So there is a definite connection between Trump and the Russians dating way back, way before the election. And here's a link to that story. Dueling links. Right, it's not necessarily true. It's reportedly, that's correct. It's an adverb. But again, I'm relying on the testimony of the two men that, that witnessed Eric Trump saying that, and they were transcribed in the article. Read the article and get back to me. Wow. The public is invited to, to come aboard NASA's first mission to touch the sun. What? Want to get the hottest ticket this summer without standing in line? Well, NASA is inviting people around the world to submit their names online to be placed on a microchip aboard NASA's historic Parker Solar Probe mission launching in summer of 2018. The mission will travel through the, th through the sun's atmospheres, facing brutal heat and radiation conditions, and your name will go along to the ride. 
for the ride. That's nice. Send your name. And it, oh, here he is. Look at him. He, what is he, 90 years old? Want to join NASA on a historic mission of discovery? The first ever spacecraft to the sun, NASA's Parker Solar Probe, will launch this year on a course to orbit through the heat of our star's corona. It is. temperatures are greater than one million degrees. Wow. Spacecraft will also carry my name to the sun and your name and the names of everyone who wants to join this voyage of extreme exploration. Wow. Parker Solar Probe is going to help us learn about how the sun works and how it affects life and technology here on Earth. And your name. Yeah. This summer, we're going to touch the sun. I'd like to do that. It's very nice. I like that very much. Well, he's gotten a little older, hasn't he? He's like 90 now. Yeah, it's the president likes to look in the sun. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but uh, he had a a penchant for looking at the sun when they told him not to the day of the solar flare. It's true. Not this president. This is the guy that we never prosecuted for uh, the John F. John F. Kennedy death. What he had to do with that. We'll never know. Trump's hiding that information still. But yeah, looking into the sun has been a, an issue. Trying to find my Trump picture of him looking in the sun. Everywhere I turn, I keep running into other pictures that are just as good. You know? It's like, yeah. Hmm. Well, it's just not popping up. Here he was learning a new word, cat. When they, they first talked to Donald Trump, they realized he was illiterate and they put him on a remedial learning education course. And I don't know how he can even wake up in the morning without a good bowel movement. All right. The mobile version so longer works on Vaughn? Oh, it does no longer work? Well, try the mobile version on our Ustream feed. That works pretty well. Check it out. You can get there by going to coolrock.com. We also have that that operational. So if you want to track us at our at our flagship testing center, go to coolrock.com to actually watch our show. Click the play button on the upper left of the screen. Ustream plays very well. Ah, yes. Oh, there he is looking at him at into the eclipse. Let's take a look live stream there he is looking at the eclipse look at that he was told not to look at the eclipse and he's looking at the eclipse he didn't do it just once there's once twice three times and that's not melania is it and he tries the glasses on There's Baron. Oh, look at him. His black soul eats the light. Oh, that is Melania. Okay, good. She made an appearance. Look at the sun again, Mr. President. Burn your retina. Don't. Oh, there you go again. Another one. You see, after being told four times not to use, not, you know, not to look in the sun and to use these special glasses, he refused. He really is a buffoon, yeah. That's why he said yes to meeting Kim Jong-un. Only a fool would meet a, a, a psychotic murderer <laughs> I mean, who's very rational, according to the CIA. 
I don't know if you had a chance to meet uh, Kim Jong Un. How many of you would would jump at the chance? Press one. Nobody's pressing one. You would. You you just did it be nif different, right? It depends where. No, you'd have to meet him on his terms in Pyongyang. That's the deal. You would want to meet him too. Press one. Well, you know, you aren't that successful, Guest 591. You've been kicked 75 times from our room. Why do you keep coming back here? Are you uh, tired of masturbating or something? I mean, why do you even come back here? What are we voting on, Dave? Nothing. I was voting whether any of you would want to meet Kim Jong-un if given the opportunity. I wouldn't. After he fed his uncle to the dogs... Can you imagine having, and he had 300 people watching as the dogs ate his uncle. Yeah, not not just feeding your dog, your uncle to the dogs, having 300 people watch and stand there and clap like this, while your uncle is being eaten by dogs. He's totally rational, according to the CIA. Uh, I'm gonna say no. I'm not going to bother meeting him ever. Thank you. You're the best troll in the net. Wow. Why not just send Pence back to Indiana to get his emails so we'll find out what he did right about when he was governor of Indiana? Because so far he can't present his emails when he was governor. Uh, I don't know how a person can get away with committing a, a violation of such massive importance. It's a public disclosure violation it's a class c felony that pence has committed and he's still our vice president i don't i don't understand it i don't i don't believe at this point that the, my gut feeling is that i don't trust the guy i don't know if i he might be rational but the rational thing might be to to hold a president you know in a in a camp 22 i mean think about it only an idiot would put make themselves so vulnerable and bring uh, the nuclear b button into a country that's a sworn enemy of that that country. Only a moron would walk in there with a, with a nuclear button, nuclear football. So that's why I'm wondering how did Trump say and why would he say yes to this deal? I don't get it. I would have said we will meet you on an international basis through digital communications. Oh, God. Am I the only person with a brain around here? I mean, it, it feels like I am sometimes. Jeez. Wow. It's absurd to meet somebody like that person to person on their terms. My goodness. You're getting sleepy. Okay, hit the hay. This, this show is only for real severe insomniacs anyway. You, you can go. It's okay. Sleep is good. I don't know. I don't trust the whole thing. I really don't. I, I mean, I would worry about Trump, Trump's safety if I were his advisor. Well, I can't trust you, John. So why would I? Why would I take what you say seriously? No, you, you actually. Now I see why all you Trump tards really like Trump because you don't ask any questions. You never wonder whether somebody's safe or not in the hands of a guy who just fed his uncle to the dogs and used a VX weapon against his brother. I mean, hello? What do you, would you walk into a crack house looking for a, you know, to, to make a friend? Are you the kind of guy that would do that? Hello, Sarah. Hi, David. I think it's for the Brussels sprouts and all of oh. the all those. Yeah, that was kind of a good combo. Worked. Yeah. Especially with a little bacon yeah i think i'd like to take uh brussels sprouts and cook them in bacon mm -hmm. fat it'd be really good to tsunami just had a lot of dental work done so she's feeling a little sleepy over there yeah well sarah's I gonna give me a break sleep because i did not sleep well last night you did but that's okay what was going on i was just thinking about things like today and you know all the, the sh yeah and yesterday and whatever yeah okay well, maybe you'll catch up tonight after this and just go to bed early, you know. Thursday is usually a night to get to bed early. 
You don't have to wait up for me. Yeah, I think I might do that. I don't know. This is an important operation to be here with you. Yeah. Um, shall we move on to the letter? I think we're on the letter U now for world geography. Uh, I was, I'm fine. Moving on. What is a landlocked nation on Lake Victoria in East Central Africa, bordered by Tanzania and Rwanda to the south? It's a democratic republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo to the west, Sudan to the north, and Kenya to the east. Its capital and largest city is Kampala. Correct, Bengalitis. It is Uganda. Let's take a look at Uganda on the map. Yes, it was Uganda. You were right. Wait, were you right? I didn't see what you wrote, hybrid know-it-allism. Here is Uganda. As you can see, it's bordered by South Sudan, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Oh, it has, and there is the lake. Lake Victoria. That is a, that is a very big lake. Here we go. Looking at Uganda. Oh, Uganda. Idi Amin Dada. I remember that. From 1971 to 1979, Uganda was ruled by the notorious militant strongman Idi Amin. It is estimated that Amin killed as many as 300,000 Ugandans through internal purges and campaigns of terror. That's worse the Rwanda slaying. That it wouldn't be a f an empty field. It would be all people if there were still 300,000 people there. He was overthrown. Under Amin, Uganda was a sponsor of international terrorism. In 1976, a French airliner was hijacked and flown to Entebbe airport outside Kampala. An Israeli commando unit subsequently rescued the hostages in a sensational raid. I hope you feel better, um, Tsunami Rose. Uh, no, we're not, Dark Engine. Stop spreading false rumors. I'm not pregnant, nor do I ever intend to become pregnant. Ever. What is a republic in southeastern Europe? Bordered by Belarus to the north, Russia to the northeast and east, the Black Sea to the south, Moldova, Romania, and Hungary to the southwest, and Slovakia and Poland to the west. Pumpkin hunters, you are correct. So is psycho behavior. It is Ukraine. Kiev is the capital and largest city of Ukraine. Let's look at Ukraine on the map, shall we? Yes, we shall. Maybe I will worry. Uh, maybe I will sleep tonight better. I don't know. Here's Ukraine. One of the former Soviet republics, it is second to Russia in population. Ukraine came under a succession of invaders and foreign rulers. 
can see the influence of different foreign rulers, including Central Asian tribes, the Mongols, Lithuania, and the Ottoman Empire. Poland, and then finally Russia. You can see all that different architecture, you know, that looks a little more Polish, that looks a little more Russia. You can, you can see all of that and all the architecture. It's pretty interesting. Uh, the second one, Misanthropy, the second one got the most news coverage on CNN. Under oppressive Polish and Russian rule in the 17th century, Ukrainian fugitives known as Cossacks Organized resistance movements. A nationalist and cultural revival in the 19th century was rewarded after World War I by independence, which was, however, short-lived. Invaded by Russian troops, Ukraine became one of the original Soviet republics in 1922. Ukraine was traditionally home to a large Jewish pop population. Many Jews left Ukraine under oppressive conditions in the late 19th century, and thousands more were exterminated by the Nazis in World War II. I agree, John Uncaged. I, I did wonder if John Cusack is related to the Cossacks. I like that be kind. What was the reason I had difficulty sleeping? It's I had a I have a a thing I was I have things I'm thinking about. I think about I was thinking about this place I was going to today, how it would be. Um and I was thinking about Oh, you watched Eyes Wide Shut. That is pretty, pretty um, eye-opening. And then I was um, thinking about things that happened yesterday. And how I can be a better person. The past two weeks you've had intolerable anxiety too. Well, I don't think I have intolerable anxiety. I don't think that I have been taking more olive leaf extract. I don't think that, I don't think that contributes to the insomnia I have. Well, I had to change my alarm clock cause I needed to get up early this morning. And anyway, <sighs> no, I never pull anyone's ear. No. But I he did te I did make someone stand out because they were they were not playing the game I had created. It was a not a fair game, but anyway. Spring spring forward on Sunday. We have not watched Room 237 on Netflix about Kubrick. No, we have not. Do we have to fight? No, we don't have to fight. Oh, it's a horror movie. Is it a horror movie? Or is it about Stanley Kubrick and his life? What is it? What is a historic division of Ireland located in the northeastern part of the island? Six of its nine counties are in Northern Ireland. Yeah, like, I do like sci-fi. It's about Kubrick and conspiracies. Room 237. All right. I don't have a paper on me. Tell David about it. Maybe he'll write it down somewhere. 
Good, I'm glad you fought for your voice. Good. Correct behavior in pumpkin hunters and 117. The correct answer is Ulster. What is the... What was... What? What? What was the official name of the former Soviet Union? Thanks. Correct, Johnson and Pumpkin Hunters and Be Kind. It's, oh, I love it. 117 typed it all out. Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. High five, 117. Good job going for it. You went the distance. Nice. What is a federation of seven kingdoms on the Persian Gulf Coast of the Arabian Peninsula? Once the domain of pirates, the area was subdued by the British in 1820. It was a British protectorate from 1892 until the late 1960s. Oil reserves have been exploited there since the 1960s. Yes, again, 117. It is the United Arab Emirates. I agree, 695. I've had a bit done. I know you, pumpkin hunters, psycho behaviors, you guys are good. Yes, UAE, United Arab Emirates. What is the official name for the kingdom comprising Great Britain, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland? Okay, I'll take that, Johnson, but... Starts with a U. Good job, pumpkin hunters. And psycho behavior. It is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Way to go. All right, what is the mountain range primarily in the western part of Russia that forms part of the traditional boundary between Europe and Asia? It extends from the Arctic tundra to the desert region north of the Caspian Sea in Kazakhstan. Correct pumpkin hunters and poison pez and psycho behavior. Nice. Correct, 117. The Urals. Urals Mountains. Urals. Um, I believe today was like National Women's Day or something. It is National Women's Month. Women's History Month is March. That's good. Maybe it is International Women's Day. Thank you, women. You're awesome. Today is Women's Day. International Women's, Women's Day, Day. Yeah. Day. You know, McDonald's was holding their, their M in a W on uh, some of their ads today. National Women's Day. That's that cute. Nice? Yeah. That is cute. Yeah, wraps have been used for testing of diesel exhaust. And you know what we found out? They get what? cancer from breathing diesel. So why would we allow diesel trucks on our highway spewing you know especially buses spewing diesel in people's faces so yeah thank you for the study dark engine you know i'm glad that they d they did spend some money thank you sarah get some sleep seriously enjoy your evening watch a show get some rest god knows you know everybody needs a little rest on their own so the EPA test did did use rats, and it's typical to see rats with diesel in their face, but we've got people in the streets around the world who are being treated like rats. So, I mean, yeah, 
They recently released a draft strategy to reduce animal testing, but the agency has been using thousands of animals every year in taxpayer funded experiments. Used about 20,000 animals in a year, rodents, rabbits, fish. They published the results of at least 20 animal exposure studies in the past two years. You know, let's talk about the results, though. I mean, we're talking about the rats. Let's talk about the humans that are breathing diesel. I mean, that's far more interesting than the rats dying. I'm sorry for the rats. I'm sorry for the dying rats in China and anywhere else. John Denver sang that song. I'm sorry for the way things are in China. I'm sorry for the way things are in China. Yeah, they expose human rats to uh, human rats. Ooh, interesting. Human rats to uh, chemtrails on a daily basis. Sometimes we all feel like a rat, Jackson. We're all getting this daily dose of chemical warfare. It's blowing in our face, blowing in the wind. Like that Bob Dylan song, blowing in the wind. I don't know if you know who Bob Dylan is. He's still alive. You haven't figured out why they do that, David? I know why they do that. I've connected the dots. They're killing off the human population. I get that, Fuzzy. Remember Bob Dylan? <laughs> I love this song. I'll play it later tonight at the end of our show. Blown in the wind. And then the wind, the Kansas song, We Are Dust in the Wind. Sands of the Hourglass, Bill and Ted. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, I, I boycotted Keanu Reeves when I found out that he supports Trump. I'm, I'm really not liking his mute, anything he ever did. And I used to like his work, you know, like The Matrix and all we are is dust in the wind dude yeah totally ha oh, i'm gonna have to ban my uh my future use of keanu reeves clips is he the same age as me really i thought he was older maybe let me check keanu reeves i'm the same age as, as hugh grant He was born in September 1964. He's four years younger than me. And he was born in Beirut, Lebanon. He's the son of Patricia Taylor, a showgirl and costume designer, and Samuel Nolan Reeves, a geologist. His father was born in Hawaii. Huh. Yeah, he's four years younger than me. Right. Bill and Todd's excellent adventure. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, totally. Yeah, he's a great actor, though. I uh, don't like him politically, though, anymore. Ever since he supported Trump. Yeah, I can't imagine supporting such a rich, corrupt pig. <laughs> I mean, really. What the hell's wrong with these people? Oh, that's right. They're rich. All right. Yeah, so this was a story that I was touching on a little earlier, and uh, it's David Dennison memes ensue after Trump's alias is revealed. I wanted to get to this. I didn't figure out what David Dennison was all about. President Donald Trump has been named in a lawsuit filed in the LA County Supre LA Superior Court by Stormy Daniels, a porn star who claims that she had an affair with the president. The lawsuit, which was first reported by NBC News, challenges a hush agreement, which has been keeping Daniels from telling her story. And in the lawsuit, Trump is referred to using the alias David Dennison. Daniels also goes by an alias Peggy Peterson. Whoa. According to the lawyer, Lisa Bloom, these pseudonyms are a way to keep the reality, real identities of Trump and Daniels out of public records. She's called Peggy Peterson in the hush agreement because lawyers use P for plaintiff. He's called David Dennison because we use D for defendant. 
Then there's a side letter with real names, she says. Some lawyers do this. I do not, she tweeted. Okay. Well, then it's, a, it's part of the hush agreement, but I don't think anybody's connected the dots between this and the tweeters. Uh, you know, David Dennison tweet. I think that's just some guy. Just some Denison guy. He probably is a real, you know, person named David Denison. All right, we're ready for action. It's difficult to have a conversation with anyone. Cycle behavior. I, I'm, you know, trying to minimize my communication with people. That's why I've asked you, you know, to only call if you want to talk about one specific subject. But I get calls all the time of people trying to hose me. Is it's just some joke of you know they think this is a joke. <laughs> it's amazing. So it's difficult. I have to really minimize my conversations to one-on-one -on -one conversations about one subject, if I can. Yeah, I try to focus on what matters. I really like this lady. You can call me a liberal or whatever you want to call me, but I, I think warning the people that the ice was coming in to destroy their lives was a very bold and powerful move for a woman. And I'll tell you, Oakland is very, ha I'm very uh, pleased to say that Oakland should be proud to have her as mayor. She's a, a, a caring person about people. You see, when a person's a mayor or a governor, they are, uh, they're in charge of a country of, or a state where everyone's one of the uh, the people there. Everyone's one of the one of the uh, constituents. Doesn't matter if you're an illegal alien or if you you know you're a human being. You're a constituent, and that's the way she sees it. And I think that's very admirable. How dare you vilify members of our community? By trying to frighten the American public into thinking that all undocumented residents are dangerous criminals. Hardworking, law-abiding Oaklanders like Eusebio and Maria Sanchez, who you ripped away from their American-born children and the cancer patients at our public hospital who relied on Maria's nursing skills every day. 